After sailing over 11 hours to the remote and off-grid Great Barrier Island, it quickly became apparent to us that we were going to have the time of our lives. The possibility seemed endless, and we had numerous adventures in our minds. But in the first few days, we were going to start out with three main iconic places that multiple sailors had recommended to us, all conveniently located within the protected Port Fritzroy Harbor. However, with so much ruggedness and raw beauty around us, we did find ourselves wondering if following in the footsteps of other sailors would lead to the memorable and adventurous experiences we hoped for. Good morning, sir. Good morning. We only have a two week window for this trip and we'll have to leave whenever the weather allows a safe passage home. How was your first night anchor? Ah, uh, it's very sleepy first night. So we were keen to start exploring right away despite being tired from the previous day's passage. Do you feel refreshed? Not quite, I need some food now. And what better place to start than the most iconic and infamous Smokehouse Bay. Going on an adventure, hey again. Matahari and the man from Smokehouse Bay. A boat owner himself for nearly 50 years and now retired from business, Mr. Webster has installed baths, tubs and ringers, water supply, water heaters, smokehouses, a coal range, planted trees and made a beach. And most of the time that he's out, the barrier is spent maintaining the present facilities, keeping the place tidy and operational and installing something new. Smokehouse Bay lived up to its standard of being a sailor's hub. And with all its resources, it would be an ideal stop for a full-time sailor. However, as I mentioned a few episodes back, I find myself drinking less these days, and, well, pretty much everyone at Smokehouse Bay was smashed. So, we decided to move on to a hike behind the bay that was supposed to take us to an overlook. We are on an adventure. We are discovering the world. <laughs> By the way, this is Mike and Archie, who we're buddy boating with, but I'll talk about buddy boating later. You can find the marks, you don't get lost. <laughs> Can't work out which way to go. I think this way. Okay, yeah, I think this way. Oh, and that does climb high though. I think it shows it going up to a loop, so this must be the loop. Yeah. How do you rate this hike? One out of ten. Uh, actually, I would say nine. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, and what about your news? What news? <laughs> Have I got news? <laughs> All the women on my channel who love you. I didn't say news, she said nudes. Oh, no. your nudes? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> He's still single. <laughs> the overlook we were expecting was mostly blocked by trees, and the path was so wide, the whole thing felt too easy. Last time we were here, we went that way because of that blue ribbon. Um, but actually, we should have gone that way. We were here for the ruggedness. Now, don't get me wrong, the day was amazing, but in this case, it was the company that made it all worth it. And we were better to learn the benefits of buddy boating a little more. Now we're having curry made by lovely Archie over at Mike's and Mike and Archie's boat. So, woo! It's the man, the myth, the legend. Hey, welcome. Hey. Look how fast he is. <laughs> Mr. Macho Man. That's the excuse. Other hand, my butt. That was fucking epic. It's quite a normal existence. Okay, first job. First job, butcher. Mm -hmm. So from 12 till about 19, I suppose. Right. So could oh, you help me get rid of someone? <laughs> <laughs> it's not female friendly. I had a guy who was like, do you pull this boat out without your husband? <laughs> I'm like, can you imagine if I ever asked you that? <laughs> like if I was like, do you pull this out without your wife? I, even as a guy now, you get a lot of people like that though. Like, I go, when I asked some question and said, oh, hey guys, is this normal or something? Or can you tell me what this is? And there's so many people who are like, uh, look, if you don't know what Still that is, just like, you, should, you should get an electrician. Yeah. Like, if you don't know what that is, you shouldn't be messing with it. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. Say so cheese, motherfuckers. Buddy boating definitely adds another element to exploring such a remote island. But when the day ended and I had time to be with my thoughts, I found myself pondering what we could do to up the adventure levels, make this trip more memorable.
were scheduled to meet Mike and Archie at the Port Fritzroy town for a hike through some waterfalls and a beer at the local tavern. Like many a sailor, we try to sail as much as possible, not only to avoid the highest diesel prices in all of New Zealand due to its remote location, but also because sailing feels like an adventure. Okay, off to our next adventure! Whee! But with the harbor being so small and the mountains affecting the airflow, we weren't even sure if sailing would be possible. Sweet, anchor is up! right behind this guy. You're sailing on a head sail. Going 3.8 now. Happy man. There's a happy town! Happy town! With Port Fritzroy Town being the central location for boats to pick up fuel, water, and supplies, as well as the port for a weekly ferry, anchoring in the area is limited. As is the case with the entire Port Fritzroy Harbor, the water stays fairly deep up to the coastline. So with such a small area to anchor in, and the requirement to put out so much chain, we were not looking forward to this anchorage. So we ended up having to try again with the anchorage because we got a little bit too close to a buoy. So um, we're just anchoring one more time here. Back anchor up. Sorry, Mike and Archie. We know it's to be there, but we're a little worried about the anchor. So we're just sitting put for just a little bit. So John and I are trying to pace ourselves with drinking. So what are we doing instead? We're having anchor tea, right? Well, anchor tea, actually it's for English breakfast. We're having, today we're going to have English breakfast. All right, we are happy with how the anchor is set, and we are off on an adventure. There's the mysterious John. He pokes his head out of the hole, looks around, and sees if there's any threats. He doesn't see any threats, so he comes out a little further. He looks around again. No threats. Now he will go off and search for his dinner, believing that his little wee ones are safe inside. Put her on her wrist. Stay safe. You're always letting me drive. You love it. I do. Don't drop the phone, you know. Yeah. Full screen. In the super cute storm. A bunch of hives just showed up. It smells like honey. Another hike we go. Mike and Archie are already on their way. Don't ever skip this step, right? All right, so we do that because it's a disease. I believe it's called Phytophthora which also kills um, avocados, and it's spread via water and soil. So you uh, back, put bacteria killing stuff on your feet and help stop the spread or slow it at least. So don't ever skip that step if you're in New Zealand, please. And I also feel like if you get too into whatever you're doing that you lose perspective. Don't mind, why is that dependent on your <laughs> And my heart is full here still, so. Why at the other end you got the bad decision for laughing? <laughs> it's all pure man. I like little bridges like this. That's cool. I was excited as we approached the waterfall, as it is sailing that has taught me to respect water. When a boat crosses an ocean, the windows have to be a specified strength. And that's because in the average big wave, one cubic meter of water weighs about one ton. So imagine a 10 foot tall, three meter wave about 20 feet long. That wave is 410 tons, which is equal to about 315 cars. Mother Nature will exert her power if she needs to. Yeah! I want my life to be like watching TV. I suppose the sort of play to make people throw themselves off cliffs. 
you know, bungee jumping or whatever, just to get the sensation of stuff moving through them. They're part of it. Yeah. So that's what they're sailing. God, I'm sailing. Yeah. We made it. <laughs> and we've got a little doggy here. Too. Oh. Heck yeah. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, you can go. Oh, my God, I got dogs. How was y'all's walk? Was it all right? Oh, it was good. Yeah? No, uh, yes. I think, like, the classic New Zealand bush walk on a summer day is, like, it's the respite from the burning sun, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, cheers. 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 To another lovely day. As the night fell and we each went to our own separate corners to process the day's happenings, a new thought entered our minds. But it would take the sun setting over the western horizon, the stars lighting up the sky, the waning moon sitting just below the trees so that we could see the bioluminescence light up the ocean water, and later in the night, the bathroom toilet, and then once again the sun coming up over the eastern hills before we would fully process our new understanding of adventure. Hey, John. Hello. <laughs> We're kind of preferring to be a bit slow, aren't we? Yeah, it's funny as how it turns out. Well, that's part of the adventure. It's, um, you can have an adventure in one place. You haven't got to be all over the map to have an adventure. Everything here is new to me. Everything I've seen in the last, I mean, I don't even know how many days we've been here, is, is new and interesting. And um, I may have seen some of it twice, but never have seen it long enough. It's very nice yeah. not putting pressure on ourselves. Yeah, yeah. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. We're just taking the pressure off and doing what we want to do, following the flow. Yeah. It's actually like super pleasant, not putting too many goals or anything to everything, so. adventure we're gonna go see a bird preserve or something like that and then head off to the tavern one more time before maybe moving locations tomorrow I let John drive this time what? we were off to Glenfern sanctuary self-named as the best little sanctuary in the world the park includes 83 hectares that sits behind a two kilometer long pest proof fence the goal of the sanctuary is to provide a safe habitat for birds and native species you see, with far fewer predators than the mainland, Great Bear Island is an ideal location to bring back some of New Zealand's most endangered species. But as is the case with any reserve efforts, it costs money, and right in the middle of the reserve sits cottages that tourists can rent. <laughs> Along with being free for all to visit and open seven days a week, this was definitely the most popular spot on our list. And okay. supposedly, according to other sailors, it would also be the best. Do you smell that? It smells like honey. I love the smell of honey. It falls in. I'm right here, capturing it. I'm a good friend, right? Yeah. The iconic cowrie. Life. <laughs>
I'd say Glenfern's worth it. What do you think? Worth it? Well, totally worth it. This is the place to go. Yeah, if you're in Pitch, Port Fitzroy, I was going to say, right? Yeah, it was the most amazing view. All right, John, what time is it? Beer o'clock. <laughs> be free, dinghy, be free. Princess Daniela will get in. Yeah. Hopefully the Princess Daniela will not fall. Eh. Grab the old sea dog waiting for beer. <laughs> and pizza. And pizza. Always That's what pizza. he does. He always has beer and pizza. Oh, beer and pizza. <laughs> we love you, Barry. We love you. <laughs> you can put the key in, huh? <laughs> Where's something? Always oh, one little detail. Oh, only Danielle knows how to start the dinghy. So far, it's only been me. <laughs> As we made our way back to the boat, I thought about the number of times I've been through this mental process. The grind to get work done before the trip, fitting in preparations, the back and forth conversations about what we might do, the morning of safety checks and the sail to the destination, the flurry of fitting in all the activities we dreamed of, and eventually, always relaxing into a more natural cadence of following our spirits, our daily desires, and remaining open to opportunities. Okie dokie, sir. See how your batteries are doing. 12.9 on the starter and 12.1 on the house battery. It felt like everything moving forward would be more unplanned, random, raw. I simultaneously felt relaxed and at ease and a strong draw towards freedom, pushing my limits and scaring myself. I had no idea I was soon to go on one of the biggest adventures I've ever done. This is literally the most calming swim. Oh, I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to get in, but I did. So there you go. Yay.